One of the great unanswered questions is how did the universe become aware of itself? Where did the potential for consciousness come from, for inert dead matter to form into life that is aware of itself? If we look at matter, we find it is never totally inert. There is always activity. This is because the universe is never at absolute zero. There is always the spontaneous absorption and emission of light. If our eyes were more sensitive to the light, we would be able to see this universal process of energy exchange. Light has momentum, and momentum is frame dependent. Therefore we have a process that will form its own reference frame. In these images from the International Space Station, we can see that a candle flame in almost zero gravity takes on the form of a sphere that is interacting with the environment on the two-dimensional surface of the sphere. Therefore we have a natural process that can form the geometry and momentum for the driving force that is needed for cell life. It is madness to believe that the organization and diversity of life could arise out of disorganization and chaos. But it is logical that the diversity and complexity of cell life could form out of a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. This broken spherical symmetry can be best seen in plant life in the form of the Fibonacci spiral being visible almost everywhere in nature. We have an infinite number of line symmetries within a sphere. In this theory, this represents an infinite number of potential timelines for the evolution of life. Because life is an integral part of the physical universe, this line symmetry is even visible in the physical shape of intelligent life, forming left and right handedness. If the physical or material world of inert matter is explained, as a universal process of continuous energy exchange formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, it can fulfill all the requirements needed to explain how self-aware life formed within the universe. All that is needed is an understanding of the mysterious nature of consciousness. This theory gets around this problem by dumbing down consciousness to the level of electrical activity that is aware of its own electrical potential. By doing this, we can place the individual in the moment of now, in the center of their own reference frame, relative to this electrical activity. This personalization of the brain can give us the concept of mind, with each one of us in the center of our own reference frame, with our own individual view of the universe being able to look back in time in all directions at the beauty of the stars. Only by dumbing down consciousness in this way can the conscious stream of unbroken, ever-changing flow of ideas, perceptions, feelings and emotions that make up our lives be explained as the most advanced part of one universal process. This theory is based on just two simple postulates. The first postulate is that the spontaneous absorption and emission of light represented by the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics forms a forward passage of time itself with the future coming into existence photon by photon with each new photon electron coupling or dipole moment. The second postulate is that at the smallest scale of this process Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that is formed by the wave function is the same uncertainty we have with any future event. In this theory we have free will because the wave-particle duality of light is acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer. This forms an interactive process continuously forming a blank canvas that we can interact with turning the possible into the actual. This is a universal creative process. We see light photon energy variations in the atmosphere forming snowflake diversity, with no two snowflake patterns being exactly the same. Also in the oceans we see light photon energy variations forming the driving force for plankton diversity. In this theory 
Instead of having life forming out of dead inert matter, we have inert matter forming out of life. This can be seen with the life cycle of plankton, forming inert land mass over millions of years, like the White Cliffs of Dover. This process only makes sense if we see the universe as a continuum, with a future coming into existence photon by photon, relative to each individual part of the universe. In this theory, creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder. Einstein wanted his theories on relativity to give us an objective understanding of reality that was relative to our everyday life. But because of the paradoxes of quantum mechanics, this never happened. In Einstein's theories on relativity, we have an effect called time dilation. The greater the energy, the slower time runs, and the greater the contraction of space-time. This fits in with our perception of time, running faster when we are interactive or interested in something. Also time seems to run slower when we are bored and not putting energy into something. It is as though the continuous flow of time and our continuous flow of conscious thought are interlinked. If we extend this idea to a person in meditation will bring his or her energy levels down. This will change the geometry of space and time. Time dilation will decrease and as time runs faster we have a decrease in length contraction of space. Space will expand and the distance between A and B will increase as time speeds up relative to the decreasing energy levels. The person meditating will experience this for what it is, the unity and oneness of one universal process, with the electromagnetic force expanding out to infinity. Thanks for watching. As an artist, I'm outside the scientific community, so please subscribe on YouTube, share and rate. It will help the promotion of this theory.